my goal is to have self-actualization, to awaken more to my true nature, for spirit to show me what love is, like what real love is in our relationship and my relationship with my son. Um, that's what I would, that's my goal. Like my goal is to understand more and more of what's really real here. And my goal is every single moment to remember what is really true. Like that really psychs me. It makes me excited. It gets me, it's like, it's like having a real goal that are, that's really meaningful. And that means something to me. <clears throat> now in the worldly sense, would that goal bring me money? Would that goal you know, make me successful? I have no idea because that's where kind of the question was coming from, from him. But I said, you can't put a price on that. Like, that's what, what I would love to understand more of. And I feel making that declaration, I've made this declaration before that this is really what I'm up to. And this is what I want. I have noticed that little by little, I am seeing that awakening happen, especially with the way I see my my husband like I, I could really see the dynamics of that holy instant I could see the dynamics of letting go of my victimization I can really experience it and it's something out of this world that I can't even put into words okay so if any of you can relate to this or can relate to your goal being love your goal being I want to know what's the truth or more of my true nature or more of my true nature in relationships Say it on the chat, like, this is my goal. My goal is to, I always say, my biggest prayer is, Holy Spirit, show me what real love is. Like, real love, like the love of God. Like, I'm so open to that love, right? Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the, the six, I'm going to give you six steps on understanding more the holy relationship and also how to... Um, incorporate it more in your life or even you know if you can have like a little smidgen of something <clears throat> that any of these steps can help you to open your mind to the holy relationship and to have an understanding that you can have holy relationships and that even if you don't see the holy relationship at a hundred percent that your relationships nevertheless will be more peaceful will be more more flowy, um, you will let go more victimization. So I feel like the ego would get in the way and say, oh, I want to have a holy relationship right now. Like my ego would say, which it doesn't say this, but I'm going to give you an example. I want to have a holy relationship with my husband right now is what my ego would say, or I want it now, or, or I want to experience that. And I don't want to have any more special relationship. It's not the way to go. It's more of I'm open to experiencing more love, more peace, more joy, more, more serenity, um, more true vision, more Christ vision in my relationships. Okay, that would be the goal. And then the holy relationship and your holy relationships will begin to flow in your life. And you don't know how it's going to be done. You're filled with wonder. You allow, you give it over to Holy Spirit. So the first um, step would be self-reflection and awareness. So this is very helpful at least for me, it's been very helpful. And these are steps that I created with what I've gone through. Um, Self-reflection and awareness in my life has really helped me to be at more peace in my relationships and to have, and I talked about this earlier, a, a sense of confidence that, that I'm perfect in God. It's like this sense of confidence, like even, even the whole looks thing has started to go away a little bit, right? Especially being someone that was a model, right? It's like this whole concept of, am I pretty? Am I ugly? Am I fat? Am I? That's kind of shifting as well. But um, I put here, the first step towards attaining the holy relationship is a cultivation of self-reflection awareness. It's like really having that awareness, um, being more present. Um, we must examine our own motives and fears and attachments with relationships. Honest self-inquiry allows us to identify the patterns and conditions that keep us trapped in special relationships, for preventing us from experiencing the true depths of relationships. So self-inquiry, you know, if for those that have read Live Your Happy, at the end, I will put a link to my book, Live Your Happy. For those that have read Live Your Happy, you, you know that self-reflection and awareness was all over the book, Right. Because for me, I needed to have that self-inquiry. A lot of the processes and practices in my book have a lot of a lot of um, a, a lot of exercises to do and to 
really feel your feelings and to really put like chapter one, when I talk about big deals, right, is to really have the self inquiry and put all my big deals on the paper, right? Really look at everything that's in my mind, all my projections that are in my mind of guilt, of fear, of scarcity, and then asking Holy Spirit what's really real here. That is self-reflection and awareness that at its best. That's like a beautiful exercise that you can do. You can find out on chapter one and two of Live Your Happy of where you want to begin to, to have an understanding of like kind of like, like expose your private thoughts, like allow, you know, the world to have it. It's like, this is what I'm fearful of and get it on paper or do whatever you need to do so that you can be really honest with yourself of what's going on here. Um, another incredible self-discovery was when I did the seven step fearless process, which is also in my book of where I sat down and I looked at all my relationships in my life. What did I make them mean? Right. And then having Holy Spirit's take on what's really real here. And I realized through that self-discovery, all my abandonment issues, and I was able to recognize that my abandonment issue, you know, came from originally my father committed suicide when I was three months old, but I needed to have that journey. I needed to have that self-inquiry. I needed to go there. I needed to understand more of myself. Why am I scared? And that takes a lot of courage to be really honest with yourself, to really go there. And, and those that work with me one-on-one, -on -one, those that are in my coaching group, you know that all this, you know, feel it to heal it, this authenticity that I'm a hot mess, this authenticity that I feel, you know, insecure, this authenticity of, I feel blah, 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 blah. It's so healing. It's like, we don't need to act like spiritual puppeteers. We don't need to pretend that, you know, we have it together. We I, I, actually the opposite. It's like, let the world have what is really true. I mean, you can't do it with everyone, but it's just, I really needed to go inside and, and, and have that self-inquiry. I remember having it when I was in Germany and I, it was a short time after I had my son, I think it was his first year and I was going through some hormonal stuff, <coughs> postpartum stuff. Actually, at some times I felt I was losing my mind. I was grabbing onto the course of miracles. I was grabbing onto the way of mastery for dear life because I was so insecure, like all my insecurities rose to the surface and I needed to begin to have this self-reflection, this self-discovery. And I needed to dive into the way of mastery at the time. I needed to dive into the course and really work with that. And, 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 and I felt unsafe in my relationship at the time. And I was a mother. I was a mother to a young child. So I remember doing the work. I remember thinking, you know, doing processes in my mind. I remember working on that I'm responsible um, working on that Christian is not my problem. And it was, it was hard. It was terrifying. Although that is what helps is really going there, really doing the work. Um, even if you don't want to, sometimes it's very uncomfortable. I remember, um, you know, teaching uh, a unity of Houston, actually Gary, Gary's on the call today. He was, he went to unity of Houston um, at one point, but I think this was the first time because I went again and I did the self-love workshop. And I remember that I was nowhere in self-love at the time. I remember I was going through a lot of a spiral of abandonment stuff and I used it in the workshop for the healing. And all the women loved it because they got to be who they were. And they also got to see within themselves, what is that shadow? What is that darkness? And why when expose it and let's heal it together? you get to heal it. So that's the first step. The first step is self-reflection and awareness. And I hope that makes sense, right? So self, self-reflection and awareness. And that means being honest with yourself and beginning to do journaling if you need to. And a lot of you that work with me already do journaling of where you have a journal and you speak to spirit and you work things out. That's very helpful. Step two, is huge. It's surrender and forgiveness. So that's the second thing that has really helped me to understand what is a holy relationship and incorporate more holiness, more holy vision in my life. As you can say, I'm not saying a holy relationship because I feel as certain aspects of my relationship with Christian are very holy. And I experience the holy relationship a lot with him. And I think he does with me just because I'll talk, I'll talk about it later, but I, I say I experience more holiness, more love in my relationship. And perhaps the holy relationship is in and it comes out holy relationship. So sometimes that happens. Okay. Um, surrender and forgiveness. Once we become aware of our attachments and illusions, 
The next step is to surrender them 